How do you know when your painting is finished? This question comes up a lot when I teach, so uh, I want to share some of my views on that, as well as some of my best advice. Hello everyone, it's Mary Louise here, the Danish painter, and welcome to the video. So how do you know when your painting is done? What do you look for? And why is it important? Those are really good questions, and I thought I would try and answer those while I work on this painting. I had started it a while back, and I've already worked over it several times, so if you want to see how it looked before, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's no secret that some paintings come more easily, but most require a lot of work, and some turn out to be a lot more than work. I hesitate to call it a struggle, but that is honestly how it can feel. So let's just say that some paintings have a longer gestation period and lots and lots of layers. Sometimes I will wait until an idea strikes and I know which way to go with the painting. Other times I take a more active approach, which often means looking through old sketchbooks for ideas or possible solutions. I found these two landscapes and like the composition of the bottom one, so I've decided to use this general layout. Now I want to lighten the lower part of the sky through several thin layers. I want to make a gradual transition from that light blue part of the sky into the clouds above. I will speed up this process a bit, but I would like you to notice just how many layers there are. Don't be afraid of layering. Many layers can be a good thing. In fact, for the way that I paint, it's preferable to use several thin layers instead of just one thick uniform layer of color. This helps to create that atmospheric feel that I want to achieve in my work. Using a dry brush technique, I have taken some of that sky color and used it also in part of the middle ground and the foreground. I find that it's a great way to tie the painting together. Okay, it's time to start adding some dark colors and looking at the small painting again to get a feel for the large shapes before I dive in using a large brush. I'm looking at the small painting once in a while, but using it as a guide only. So I'm doing these dark shapes freehand. It might feel intimidating using a large brush if you aren't used to it. But don't worry, you will get the hang of it. Also, please remember that uh, you can often wipe off the paint while it's still wet if you make a mistake. Or you can leave the paint to dry and paint it over. Nothing is set in stone here. Try to think of any mistakes as just another layer. Going back to the question of when a painting is finished, I've heard someone say that when you can't make the painting better by adding more, you should stop. Which I think makes a great point. If you've painted for a while, you probably know the feeling of having gone too far, wishing that you had stopped earlier. I definitely know the feeling. 
Let me know in the comment section if this ever happened to you too. So what can we do about that? I have learned to take frequent breaks and actually look at the painting. It also helps to work on more than one painting at a time, kind of rotate between them. I feel that the nearer I get towards finishing a painting, I spend much more time looking and less time painting. It's a new year and maybe you are looking to try something new with your painting. If you are looking for some practical step-by-step -step ways to loosen up your painting, I have created a great free guide for you with five proven ways to loosen up your painting style. Check it out if you like. I will put a link to it in the description below this video. I've reached a point in the painting process where I feel I'm very close to the finishing line. I like the shape that kind of lead the eye further into the distance. I will just soften a few edges and show you one more bonus tip to help you decide whether or not your painting is finished. I wanted my painting to have a feeling of vast open landscape that you find here in northern Denmark. Someone told me recently that they felt the clouds were moving as they stood in front of and looked at one of my paintings and I thought that was really cool. The bonus tip I have is to look at your painting in black and white, because if it works in black and white, it will work in color too. And at the end of the day, you are the painter, so you get to decide when your painting is finished. <laughs>